climbing the walls, finally I came back and they re-entered through the valley gate. The officials did not know. The officials, they are the opposers of God's way. Amen? Amen? These officials, they are the people who are opposing what God was doing. And now, uh, what is God saying here? God is saying, let's face the facts. Let's build the wall. Let's dismantle the things of the enemy. Number five, the signal of the corporations, Nehemiah, that he was, he was, this is a symbol of successful way. He sold the corporation of the board of believers. If, we, if the Bible tells us, if we all join our hands together and they pray, there's nothing that can conquer us. Amen. You know, the corporate prayer of believers can chase a thousand. Christ, yeah. Amen. There are demonic forces there that wants us, you know, to defeat us and to bring us down. But I'm telling you, we're not building the wall of a church, we are building the wall of the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. And that kingdom of God, God at the end, you say, well done, my faithful servant. You and I, we got to get in that level where we say, God, this is not looking pretty. In fact, when you know you're doing something for God is when you get where it's dead. It's not looking pretty. And you ask him to put in the over. And says, now, this is the time. Can you get on the roads and start doing something? That's when you know you're working for God. Amen. Amen. You know, I always want, you know, I strongly believe God called me into apostolic ministry whereby you go in a place whereby nobody knows you, nobody loves you, nobody, everybody doubts you, but at the end, everybody will believe that you are sent of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. It, you know, it's easier to be lost in a large crowd, or it's easier to get in a place whereby everybody looks at you and says, who, who do you say you are? Isn't Jesus the one that they asked him? Who, who, who do you say you are? Who do, I, do men say I am? And out of them, they had a question. Some of them said, ah, you, we know you, the son of Joseph. He says, isn't your mother Mary? Your father the carpenter? Until Peter had to have the greatest revelation, you the rock. And according to you, the gates of hell shall not prevail. God must give you that revelation who Jesus is. The enlistment of Christ shows the importance through organization was. This man here to bring all different men, all different tribes to build. And you know, I'm going to show you real quick here how everything was going on in the days of Nehemiah. Whereby he had to position men to stand and build in different walls. What kind of a man was Nehemiah? Nehemiah was an excellent leader who laid a large number of people to rebuild the walls of the city of Jerusalem after it had been destroyed by the barbarians. There are people here in Buffalo that are destroying the walls of the Christians and they enjoy to see that the Christians they are going down. There are people actually even in the churches that would love to see someone not being strong as a Christian as long it feathers their position as men and women of God. But God what he wants is that my assignment before God is to get each and every one and put you on the fire for God and do the things that God has called you to be. That's my assignment. Amen. Amen. The task was too big for him to do by himself. What is Nehemiah doing? Nehemiah made sure that every person had their place and a job to contribute in the overall task. Huh. Begin to pray and say, God, why am I here? What am I doing here? What am I supposed to contribute in your kingdom, not in Home City Church, in your kingdom? Home City Church is just a speck in the sight of God. But God wants us to find out what you contribute in the kingdom of God is what will make Home City Church to grow. Hallelujah. Are we looking? Okay? <laughs> Nehemiah, he fulfilled his mission. How did he fulfill the mission? through mobilizing others to catch the vision and the working to accomplish it. How do you do that? You get the people that are like 
like-minded, even people that are not like-minded, show them what Jesus Christ is revealing to you. As you begin to show them, then tell them, guys, we are about to enjoy the harvest. We're going to go to war. Be the general. We're moving right now. We're not going to be afraid. We're going to besiege the enemy. We'll surround them. We'll slaughter them one by night. Why? From twilight to twilight until we have the victory. God is calling us for greater victory. Amen? What are these gates? I want to speak about the gates. Then I'll be closing after I finish speaking about the gates. There's some gates that they call the fish gate. What's the fish gate? But the night I went through the valley gate towards the Jericho. Well under the dam gate, examining the walls of Jerusalem, which have been broken down, and its gates, which have been destroyed by fire. Then I moved on towards the fountain gate and the king's pool. But there was not enough room for my mount to get through. So I went up to the valley by night, examining the wall. Finally, I turned back and re-entered through these gates. Nehemiah chapter 3 verse 3 tells us what the fish gate is. Wherever you find the gates is a symbol of entrance or breakthrough. In our lives, there is a gate. You, you, have you ever seen people whereby when you look at them, you say, man, there's a wall around them you can't break through. That's a gate. Amen? There's just a wall around there. There's a wall around that person. That's a gate. Now, the gates of our lives, we see the fish gate here. And this fish gate in Nehemiah chapter 3, the Bible says, But the fish gate did the sons of Hannes built, who also laid beams thereof, and set up the doors thereof, the rocks thereof, and the bars thereof. Hannes, the name Hannes means the thorn. They had to build the fish gate. And the dirty fish gets, that's why they came and they crowned Jesus as the King of Kings. The thorns that they put there. And when the thorns they pricked Jesus, the blood fell down and mingled through his body. And it was that moment where we see Jesus, everybody now, they call him, he is the King of Kings. Yes. That's when his kingdomship was being established. That's the fish get there. Now, from there we see the ship gate. The ship gate, what is the ship gate? Elisha, the son, the high priest, and his fellow priest went to wait and rebuilt the ship gate. Now, you see, I want you to understand. Every gate had significance. The fish gate, that's where they were going to crown Jesus. Are we going to crown Jesus in this church? As the king of our lives. Are we going to crown Jesus in our lives? That he's the Lord of Lords. Yes. He's my Savior. Yes. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. Amen. Without him there is nothing that I can do. He's the seed of a woman that was bruised. But then when you look in the Revelation, he's the tree that was regained. Mm -hmm. That's the fish gate. He's the king of kings. He is the Lord of Lords. Now he's talking to us here. Now the ship get here. He begins to show us what the ship get is. The high priest and his fellow priest went to wait. The high priest. Because now the ship get us to deal with you and I. Amen. With you and I. The priests, they were the only people that were allowed to work at the ship get. Not anyone else. The priest. There are the people. Why? Because at the ship gate, that's where we find God. That ship gate means God will restore. God at this moment, he's looking at everything. And they look and say, who are we going to send to build the ship gate? We're going to send the priests that are going to bring restoration. Yeah. So, we want to see Buffalo restored to Jesus. Can somebody shout amen? Amen. amen. I want to see this place restored. I want to see the house of God restored. I want to see where God has put us. We are going to give the devil a heart attack. Yeah. We're going to bring a spiritual earthquake in this place. Whereby people that will say, my good God, we say, what can come, what good can come out of them? What good can come out of us is that we are building the ship gate. Yeah. And what is that the ship gate? The 
That's where restoration yeah. is. Amen? Amen? At the ship gate, that's where restoration was. Then, from there, they moved from the ship gate, and the only people that were allowed to work at the ship gate was not only anybody, but was the priest. Then they went to the inspection gate. <laughs> Amen. That's where we check ourselves there. Inspection gate. What is at the inspection gate there? At the inspection gate, that's where we knew that you cannot go in, in this place, in exception you know who Jesus Christ is. And that inspection gate stands, Jehovah is my Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yes. When people have moved at that inspection gate, there was a real message. And now, as we read people, are we going to direct them to Jesus or to us? You see, the problem that it is these days, people, they are drawn to personalities, not to God. Right, that's right. Very true. People, they are going to the church because there's this personality. Amen. Not because there's God. Mm -hmm. I want to be drawn to the inspection God, yeah. gate because there's Jehovah. Amen. 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 God is calling us to draw us to that inspection God because we are going to find God, not a human being. And what has killed the churches these days, what has killed the believers, we are following men. You know, people for many years they followed men. When a man falls down or he backslides, everybody backslides. Because their trust is in what? We have seen when many evangelists they have gone down. Churches that were thousands and thousands went into half. We have seen when Ted Hunger had a scandal in Colorado. The church went down. Jim Swagger, the church went down. Why? Because there are foreign men. If those men that were following these evangelists, they are not foreign evangelists, and they had them gone to the inspection gate, no matter how goes down, he said, I'll pray for my brother, and I'll bring him back to the inspection gate. I'll never leave them at the inspection gate. I'll help them to know. Amen. Amen. So, let's pray for people to stop lifting men's name and lift Jesus. Uh, amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It says, if you draw me, yes. I'll draw men yeah. unto me. Yeah. Amen. amen. Yeah. So, the inspection gate, it was the gate whereby people have to know God is Jehovah. And there's one thing that we find that that inspection gate there, you know, in this in the, uh, in the book of Luke, chapter 15, verse 4, it says, What man of you having a, a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, doth not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness of the goal and to get that away? Amen? The number four is the, the Ephraim gate. What is this Ephraim gate to do with us? <laughs> This was a double fruitful gate. As they were building this gate, this is where they were coming and they say, Good God Almighty, oh blessings are coming, more than abundant. My God shall supply according to the, his riches in Christ Jesus. That, that was an Ephraim gate. This was a, the time when the blessings, when you labor in the kingdom of God, God began to bless. It's that Ephraim gate there. That we need to be there. Amen. And from the Ephraim gate, they go to the valley gate. What is the valley gate? This, this, is, this is a death gate. Where we leave our past. Where we leave those things that has held us in the past. They remain at the valley gate. Where the things that we were, if there was unfaithfulness, there was unrighteousness, there was lying, there was lack of commitment to the things of God. It had to remain at the valley gate. Now you see, this building was strategic. The building of the walls. Everybody says, they built. as I'm going to be teaching about, you know, Nehemiah project, you are going to find out where you fit in. They are not just building for the sake of building. They come and say, we're building the wall. We're going to, to let this out. It had the meaning. And what I'm trying to make you understand is to hear the meaning of the reason why they were building these walls back. Why did God encourage and challenge men to build these walls? God will never challenge men to build the walls without a purpose. God is not 
precious than the walls made by men. God is interested in there was a special significance at this very gate. If you read in the Bible, 2 Chronicles chapter 26, and there it says, Hosea built the towers in Jerusalem at the corner of the gate, and at the valley gate, and at the gate angle of the wall, and it was fortified there. Hosea means, we see there, Hosea means Jehovah is my strength. Amen. And this is the time whereby you come and says, God, I'm dying, I'm leaving everything here. Help me to go in. Then you come to what we call water gate. What is the water gate? The water gate they were building because this is the place where they were being baptized, purified, and be brought in. And they say, now you're coming in this place whereby you will not be the same. The water symbolizes the Holy Spirit. Where the peace of God was coming into their lives. And God is changing them and He's saying, Now you are coming in a new labor, you will never be the same again. Peace I'm bringing to you. Mm -hmm. He brought them to the water gate. And I want God to bring us to that water gate. No matter what we are going through, we can look at the water gate. No matter the storm that is coming along. May I preach in here? <laughs> to the 
down gate. And then the final gate that was there is the fountain gate. How many love the fountain gate? Yeah. Ha, the fountain gate. And this gate means recompense. That's where the amendment, that's where the joy of the Lord was. It was at the fountain gate. The fountain, everything is being springing from the ground. That's where, the, you know, they, there's a song that they sing. You know, there's a, a stream that flows through Emmanuel's vein through, come to the fountain. You know, I, 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 I'm telling you there, through that fountain there, that will never run dry. All other brooks, all other rivers, they run dry. But the fountain gate will never run dry. This is the place where they were being drenched in the presence of the Lord. This is the place where they were being amazed in the presence of the Lord. The fountain gate was there to change them. Today, I want us, as we go, as we are rebuilding the walls that were broken down in Buffalo, let's go through the fountain gate. Let's stand fame at the fountain gate. Let's declare that that river that will never run dry at the fountain gate is ready for us. Let's drink from the river that will never be thirst again. When they drank from the fountain gate, they were never thirst again. It's the fountain gate that will change our lives. Because we are not drinking the water made by human beings. You remember when Jesus said, Woman, the, the water that I'm talking to you, if I give it to you, you never thirst again. But in the water that you fetch from here, you will thirst. It was the fountain get water. Today, saints, God is calling us for a mega move of God. I feel it, I know it, I can sense it, I can smell it, I can almost touch it. But I don't know, I wish you can reach me in the spirit realm and then touch the fountain gate. And as we touch that fountain gate, we will see signs and wonders, we will see miracles, we will see things begin to happen. Because at the fountain gate, Jesus becomes the Savior. He saves us. Amen. I want us to come to the fountain gate. I don't want you to come here in front as I'm closing. I just want, if you want to drink from that fountain that will never run dry, stand wherever you are.